I'm Bo Allen, and this is the NFL Players Second Acts Podcast. I'm Peanut Tillman, and this is the NFL Players Second Acts Podcast. I got my guy, Rant Gandalf the Great, Roman Harper. What's up, baby? What's up, man? I see you tried to uh, mix some things up, but it's all good because we're talking hockey. And then wrong with a little bit of hockey. I know we don't play it. It ain't a lot of us in the league that play it, but we try to. Yeah, I mean, we. I can skate a little bit. I just can't go backwards. You know, I can't go backwards either. It's the hardest part. I didn't even (laughs) think it was that. Anyways, wherever you pick up your podcast at, make sure you give us a five star rating, hit review, give us a couple comments. Make sure you hit that, click that follow button, man, because we're always driving you more and more heat every single week. Uh, well, Hot every, fire! I mean, we spitting them out right now, man. We're doing more and more. We got another great guest this morning. Wherever you pick up your podcast, uh, whether it's Apple Podcasts, iHeart, please make sure you give us a follow, like, review, a couple comments. Peanut, who is our guest this morning? A bigger guy. Oh, now he's definitely he's a, a bigger guy. He's a slimmer guy. He still looks very big. Still looks <laughs> guys. Massive thank you. Hands. Thank you. <laughs> Ham hog hands. All right, check it. D, D tackle for the league uh, for seven years, played for uh, Philly, played for uh, Tampa Bay, won a Super Bowl in 2017 with the Eagles, retired in 2020. Now he has a podcast, uh, does some stuff with Chris Long and his water boy group, providing clean water for communities in need. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Bo Allen. Yeah. Thank you for having me, gentlemen. I really appreciate it. And that is spelled Bo B E A U. Like beautiful. There we go. There it is. Now, well, the Cajun way, I thought that's how to do it. It is kind of Cajun. Like, how, did, how, did, yeah. how did you come up with that? So, no, well, I didn't come up I with know, it. I know. <laughs> French Canadian is what it is, eh? My mom tells me all the time, she's like, I, I thought about spelling your name B O, but then I figured all the kids would make fun of you for having body odor. So we decided to spell B E A U. It was incredible foresight on her part because I definitely would have got made fun of for did that. Did you stink <laughs> as a kid or something? Or did I mean look at me, man? I'm a big <laughs> guy. Like, like, come on. Probably sweat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, dude, I probably sweat. Uh, I want to talk oh, to you about funny. another nickname, uh, the Butter King. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Where, how does that? How does that? What is that? I get asked about it a lot, and everyone expects like a big story. Again, my mom. My mom says that uh, it's because like one day when I was a young, like a toddler, she opens up the fridge and there's a stick of like we. I grew up in Minnesota, okay, so like big dairy family. <laughs> we would always have like a stick of butter, you know, in the fridge, but there's just a big bite out of it. So that's what she says the Butter King case from. Listen, basically, so you, they grew up calling you the Butter, butter King. It's, it's been like a family nickname for like a long time, but it's just a bit. It's just a running joke that I've really leaned into over the years. It's like my post retirement alter ego, you know, second acts. No Unless doubt. you're done playing, you got to find something else to, you know, kind of do and get into. So that's that's my thing now. I'm the Butter King. But there's not like a great story or like an origin story like that. It's just a it's a self proclaimed title. That's it. I just, self-proclaimed. And you don't yeah. just walk around with like I sticks like of it. butter in your pocket, one in the yeah. car. I mean, throwing them out. I just got to get into character a little bit. You <laughs> okay, know? Okay. It'll happen. Right, yeah. we'll, we'll give, us, give us a real big good story. You know, like we all play in the league. We all have our welcome to the NFL moment. Give us a good story about your welcome to the NFL moment. <sighs> Man, there's I feel like there's there's always like you can be in your like fifth or sixth year in the NFL and still have like welcome to the no NFL. No doubt. Moments, no doubt. You know what I mean? I'm, <laughs> Most I'm, definitely. I'm trying to think of, of a couple good ones, I, I guess. I think my, my one of my first ones is like the first time, you know how you do one on ones yeah. and you kind of go down the line and just watching like Fletcher Cox and Brandon Brooks do like a one on one rep yeah. when I was in Philly, just being like, oh, my God, <laughs> like that's that's <laughs> like that, you're supposed to like, how how do I compete with guys like this? Right, like being right. like You know, or like I think that's kind of the first thing that stuck out to me is just like watching some of these players move as a rookie. Like, I was a seventh-round draft pick. Like, you're always just in awe of, like, the players around you kind of thing. And that yeah. was, that was like, I don't have, like, a specific defining welcome to the NFL moment. I just remember being at practice and being like, holy, sh- holy moly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I, this is, like, is going to be every day. You have to compete like this with these guys. And, like, here we go. So, when you saw Brandon Graham and these guys moving or Flexion mm-hmm. Cox, like, early, yeah. like, what did you, in your mind, you're like, man, I need to get better at. This, 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 and this. Just everything. How does that that motivate you to get better? Yeah. Well, I I think, like, when you're a seventh-round draft pick, like, you feel like every day, like, you're one bad rep away from getting cut, you know? Like, it's – you don't have the kind of leeway that some of these, you know, guys in their second deal or or whatever, and you just feel like you have to do – I just remember, like, I have to learn about the game. I think that's the biggest thing that kind of stuck uh, stuck out to me early is, like, I don't think people understand like the amount of meetings, the amount of studying that goes into playing NFL football. Like a lot of guys just think that you can, you know, like, oh, like 
I've had a friend say to me, like, oh, if I was 320 pounds, like, I'd be in the NFL, too. It's like, dude, <laughs> there have been so many guys that are more talented than me, at, like, physically and athletically. And, like, the, the, the way you play good football is, like, learning how to play the game. Yeah. yeah. You know? And so I, I was lucky. In Philly, we had a group of vets. And you guys know how it is. Like, when you get a rookie, like, sometimes you, ca- you kind of feel them out. You're like, is this going to be a guy that, like, is going to be a guy or like, I don't like how, how's this going to go? And, and I had a good group of guys that kind of taught me how to be a pro. And I'm sure you guys had the same, you know Most what I mean? Definitely. Like, yeah. It's the, it's the best. And so you try to pass it along, you know, when you get, when you become a vet and now we're all washed. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> but uh, I guess what I'm saying is like, I remember early, I, I, I was kind of taken under, you know, different guys' wings, like Connor Barwin, Brent Selleck, yeah. Jason Kelsey, like guys, and they ball, taught ball. me how to, yeah, great player. Um, you know, taught me how to be like a good football player and like taught me, you know, how to study the game, how to be a pro. And I think every young player kind of has that moment where they're like, yeah, I got to really learn how to do this. <laughs> you know, like you don't just walk out of bed and, you know, two gap, you know, you got to <laughs> learn the art of it. So. So is it safe to say in high school and college, you were just you were just out there just being an athlete? Uh, I mean, in Minnetonka, Minnesota, you were just like, yeah, two gap and yeah, just throwing dudes I, I, off I, of you. I was trying to be, but like, you, know, you can't really get away with being like bigger and more athletic, at least I couldn't bigger and more athletic than people in, in the NFL. Everyone's that's a prerequisite, you know, yeah. like everyone's <laughs> a freak, you know, you gotta, you gotta figure out those little tricks that you can do. And it's not easy, man. How, how <laughs> cold does it get in, in Minnetonka? How, it gets cold, man. Yeah. Like, give me, give me some temperatures. Well, I, I'm a Minnesota guy. I like the cold, but I live in Tampa now. So like my blood's thin out. So we were, at, we were at this play 60 or the special Olympic. Olympics event yesterday. Yeah. And, uh, Freeze it. it was, I was cold. I was like, dude, I've changed. You know, like I used to be I'm out so here, weird. like no uh, sleeves, tough guy. <laughs> I was like, my teeth were kind of, I was, I was cold yesterday, man. I was like, what happened to me? You know, you got this awesome oh beard. <laughs> this the long flowing <laughs> hair. Butter, the this, is, this is the new me. Yeah, you know? like, Second like, act. The Viking <laughs> look, but it's yeah. like, I'm not a Viking. Yeah, I, like, I live in Tampa. No. I'm a Viking yeah. in Tampa. I'm like one of these guys now. No, no, this, <laughs> no, this no more. It's like, nah, nah. nah, nah, yeah. nah dude. I'm a pirate now, guys. <laughs> uh, what is your uh, fondest memory from su- winning Super Bowl 52? <sighs> so the coolest thing, I mean, it was. Besides, like, bringing the first championship to the Yeah, no, I mean, that was great. That was cool. Uh, but I grew up in Minnesota, Minnetonka, like you're yeah. saying. And uh, I feel like. Like, just to win, the Super Bowl is in Minneapolis. So, like, I, you see that and you, you're like, wow, it'd be awesome to, you know, play the Super Bowl in, in my hometown and 20 minutes away from where I grew up. And then it actually happened, you know. And it never really works out like that in the NFL. Like, you don't, yeah. So, for that to actually, that to come to fruition, like, it was so cool. My whole family was there. All, a bunch of my boys from high school. How many tickets you get? Dude, I had to get, like, the 20, max. 25 tickets. The max. Yeah. Bro, you, 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 make no yeah. Money. Yeah. you didn't make nothing. Yeah. You didn't make no money. Yeah. You're horrible, man. Bro, you, you lost pay. money. You I had, lost. like, friends coming out of the woodwork. Like, hey, can you get me? Like, dude, please. Like, no. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. But no, I, like, for real, like, there were, I didn't get, like, 20, 25 tickets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were broke after that. Yeah, I spent my entire Super fine. Bowl game. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's they fine. deserve it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> fine. You know, but no, I mean, it was a great memory. So my parents came down to the field after the game, and like they're just for them to, to kind of experience, the, you know, the you know the biggest moment of your athletic career and have your whole in your hometown and have all your friends and family there. Like it was it's a special memory, man. You don't really that doesn't really happen too much, you know. So for that to come true, that was that was really cool. One of one of the funny things about when you win, I've. I'm, I'm I'm speaking like I I won one, but I haven't. But one of the things I like to see though is when they have the uh, the parade and what the players are doing and drinking and all that. Yeah. The, the cool part. Where were you uh, during uh, Jason's uh, speech? I was standing. And right did, didn't you wear that costume the whole time? Yeah, you had that whole since the morning. Yeah, you look like a Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> it, it, was it was hilarious. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, for real. We kind of pregame before the the duh, parade. Duh, come on, yeah. Duh, yeah. You, I, the nice thing about winning Super Bowl is like you kind of get a pass. To for just sure. Kinda, yeah. I'm gonna wild out for a while. Um, but we were pregaming. Kelsey and I lived right next to each other, and. I like went over to his outfit. I, I or I went over to his house. I had my outfit on. I was wearing like double denim with an American flag shirt. And uh, Kelsey's like, "All right, I gotta go change." And comes back. He's wearing this mummer's outfit. I was like, "What the fuck? Like, yeah. What? What?" <laughs> yeah. And then he gave the speech. Please welcome Jason Kelsey, Philadelphia. I'm gonna take a second to talk to you about underdogs. Hungry dogs run faster. Did he 
impact is that at all? I think so. Okay, I good. didn't see it, but like, I really think he, but he kind of is like, he's got that persona where like he can just turn it on. Yeah, exactly. And and he crushed it. And obviously it was like a legendary moment, but I, I was not really expecting that. And I, none of us kind of knew that it was coming. And it's obviously an iconic moment, you know, yeah. after the Super Bowl, he, he nailed it. I don't know how he did it either. Cause like, like I said, we've been pregame, pregame, man. <laughs> having, having a good time, you know, and he, <laughs> He, he nailed it. So. No, I um. Do you have any pictures of being on the soup on the like with your parents on the field? Yeah, with the confetti, confetti falling. Yeah. I, I think that's one of my fondest pictures mm -hmm. I have is with my mom holding the Super yeah. Bowl trophy, yeah. with the confetti and stuff, and it's just really really cool. Like you said, getting to share that moment with the ones who've been with you since day one. Yeah, this may be a little bit off subject. But who's this uh, high school friend of yours that plays for yeah, hockey? We met up hockey. with my buddy Justin Hall last night. He plays for the Red Wings. They just finished up their season, barely missed the playoffs. Um, but yeah, I played hockey I'm from Minnesota, so I played hockey. So all what? All can you skate you, backwards? Yeah, Definitely yeah baby. About this. Yeah, I know you can't skate backwards. <laughs> I was yeah. skate, can you skate backwards? This well, not right now, but. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, you, dude, when you grow up in Minnesota, like you just go out on the lakes and play in the winter. And my dad plays hockey still. He's like 65 years old. Like still plays a couple times a week. Yeah, great <laughs> athlete. So I, I hope I can be as mobile and uh, athletic as him. But yeah, it was fun to meet up with Justin last night. Just catch up with you know, it's hockey's so different than football. So I was kind of grilling him a little bit about like the locker room and what it's like. And it was just fun to catch up with him. What, cool. what does different he say? Way. Yeah. Different, yeah. different how it's uh, It's just a smaller locker room. You know, I, I don't even know. I think they have like 20 guys in their locker room and, uh, you know, with football, it's Is like, there's a little bit more chill, like more, more chillax. Maybe I think in like a different way. Like, I, I think, got you. but like the hockey guys are like, like they all kind of roll together. And like, in my experience, at least like they all, you know how it is with football. Like you have, like a 10 year vet. And then you have a rookie, you have a guy with like three or four kids. Like, I feel like the the hockey guys, it's almost like college where everyone's like in the same like stage of life almost. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's like some weird phenomenon where they're all just like very similar. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was fun to talk to him about that. And he, yeah. he just finished up his season. So I think their locker room smelled the worst of all sports. <laughs> it, it smells. It's so terrible. bad. It's putrid. I don't bad. know, man. In camp, sometimes you go in the locker room, Ooh, yeah, like, it was always the big guys. Though. It was always like O line, D line. But I just sure. know you can't like in hockey. Like you know, they don't. I don't. I just think the, the sweat gets in their pads a lot more. Yeah, and it yeah. Stays, it just stays. And it's in like that. yeah, and it's, yeah. And, and I just want the same. I just want to fight. Yeah, I would have too. I was asking about that. He was like, so let, <laughs> Justin's not really a fighter, but he was telling me like the techniques and stuff last night. He's like, you got to grab the, they get, they try to grab the, like the Jersey, you know, over the, the elbow. Yeah. So you can't like throw a punch and then you, I don't know. I think so it I, is a technique. There is a technique. Yeah. I don't really know it. I think I'd just be out there like just throwing <laughs> haymakers. <laughs> but you played. So what position did you play? I, I kind of, I played all, like I played, you know, I would take like slap shots from the blue line, like defense, but I, I kind of like my, especially was like sitting in front of the net and tipping pucks. <laughs> so like yeah. screen the goalie, but I played like left wing defense. I kind of played all over. I, I would play, uh, I don't know if you guys experienced this, but like I have such fonder memories of playing other sports than football. Maybe it's cause I was a nose guard, but I love playing <laughs> hockey. Like I'd play, my dad would coach our teams. I'd play like up with my brother and yeah. I mean, I loved it. I played the cross, too. It's, it's, for whatever reason, like, the other sports felt like a lot, like, not as much work, you know? Like, more, you can enjoy it a little bit more. So, I have a lot of fond memories of, of playing hockey. I don't think people understand football is, like, it's a chess game. Like, you, yeah. there's so much strategy mm -hmm. and technique that goes into a game plan when your coaches are going over third down, third down progression, uh, first and ten, here's what they do on the goal line. These are the plays that they run. This right here, he's going to run this. All right. Oh, I got to just power. I got to cut back the two gap, the, the lead week, the the counter. Like there's there's a lot that goes yeah. into it that you, us, we have to study in the back end. You, all right, if he's pulling elephants on parade, all right, yeah. I got to, I got to, I got to spill this. I can't, if I go outside, I'm messing, you know, like there's, yeah. there's so much that goes. And then individual that. matchups too, where like, you know, if I'm, you know, I was a nose guard, so I'm like, but if I'm one on one rushing a guy, like how am I going to rush this guy? Like what have I set him up with? Uh, how is he a high puncher, a low puncher? You know, is his chest open? 
there's so much that goes into it that yeah, I feel like sure, people, people sure. don't realize. And that's kind of what I was talking about earlier. Like, you have to learn the game. And uh, I feel like the more you play, you know, you can kind of s- stop taking such a individual approach and uh, you can get a broader view of, like, you know, the yeah. defense, the coverage, the, you know, how the offense is going to attack different, you know, defenses you're in and stuff like that. Yeah, so, yeah, I, yeah. I think it's just so cool. Sorry, Peanut. Just even what you're talking about right there is like, well, he's a low puncher or a high puncher. Yeah. Is his chest open or is it a chest another way? Like, those are little intricate details as a D tackle that you would need to know. Yeah. That for me, I'm like, dude, I don't even really understand what he just said. <laughs> Total yeah. different perspective. Yeah, different totally. experience with the game. You yeah. Know? It's, like, it's, we're it's talking fun. power and pull. Like, we both understand that. But yeah. what you just said. I'm like, I don't know. There's really a lot that goes in. I don't even know what that means. Yeah, but don't put me out in space like <laughs> okay. you guys are I'm good on that. Like, I can't do that. You got to know your role. Yeah, you know? yeah. for sure. Yeah. Just put me, like, right over the ball, and I'm I'm comfortable. Less yeah. thinking. I like that. Yeah. So, I know since retirement, Rome and I, we started this podcast, and mm-hmm. we're always trying to – the purpose of this podcast is to really just talk to the former players and figure out what they're doing in their second act. So, you've been retired uh, – since 2022, your last game was 2019. Yep. You retired in 2022. Yeah, it took um, a while to hang it up, you know. Yeah, just it's for, for sure. Why do you th- why do you think it was it, it took so it, long it's just, to well, hang it up? I was still kind of collecting a little bit of my contract, if I'm being honest with you. So you don't want to retire while you still have some money coming in. You know? Hell yeah. no. That's just not smart. Get uh, that money, dog. <laughs> yeah. But it's also like it, it is a big transition and it's football is a big part of our identities. I'm sure you guys mm-hmm. understand. And uh, it's it's tough to kind of figure out what you're gonna do next. So it's I mean, I hats off to you guys. It's what I've found in retirement is like you gotta. There's nothing that there's nothing like playing football in the NFL. Nothing. There's nothing that's as competitive, as physical, as you know, demanding mentally. Thing, things like that. So you gotta. I I for me I uh, you know I kind of fill that football void with a variety of different things. So I do yeah. media stuff with Chris, and you know, obviously like you got to stay active. So I f- found like, you know, I compete, I'm not competing in football. Uh, I like get off just beating old men playing pickleball, <laughs> like working out. Like you, when you're done playing, you need So you to, are beating old men in pickleball. Yeah. That's all I got, man. <laughs> that's all I have. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta set it up on Let's the green go. lane and play. Like I'm, I'm ready, I'm, dude. I've been dude. destroying I play people. like a lot. I do too, like, I've been yeah. destroyed. Do you do doubles or single? Uh, I, I play because mostly doubles. I'm telling yeah. you, he's he's my yeah. golf guy. I'm like, dude, forget dude, golf. I suck at golf. Man. I'm, look I'm, at me, like if you I'm look at me, destroying people on pickleball right <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah, like great. Let's play. I'm I'm game. We got a yeah. uh, uh, green. Oh put God. the camera. Uh, green green light, Chris. Uh, whatever. We I'm destroying. I am the destroyer. That is my name. I Peanut the destroyer of pickleball. <laughs> I don't care if you young. You old, uh, I'm ready, black dude. or white, male or female, I'm destroying you. That's that's what I do. That I love this. I love that we're getting all this out. Well, you like, you know, you we're competitive. You know, you can't yeah. like you can't really turn that off. So you just got to find different outlets for it in retirement. That's that's what I'm finding. So yeah. So I got a question that we normally don't ask people, but with you, you seem like a special guy. Oh okay. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> you're, uh, this is our this is our Mount Rushmore question. Okay. Right. Uh, successful life making it doing well who would be on your personal mount rushmore of like just guys i played with of right? of life football Ooh. off the field on the field on the rink off the rink yeah the lake minnetonka off of lake minnetonka <laughs> whatever i gotta think about that a little bit because i feel like you know you get the opportunity yeah for people for, there's you got well, you too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I saw Roger Goodell out there. That's that's it's funny when you're, you know, at events like this, you just walk right by him. Well, when you play, like nobody, you're, you're like nobody likes it. <laughs> I know. And then when you're done, it's like, <laughs> but he's kind of like I ran into him in uh, at the Super Bowl in Vegas, and like he's a lot more personable than yeah, I was expecting. That's exactly yeah. what I'm going to. It's <laughs> like when you don't play, it's yeah. like. I see nice guy. I know. I, I, yeah, was, I was talking with him. About I was like, all right, Raj, I'll see you later. And I was like, oh, wow, it's calling him Raj. <laughs> like, that's funny. But no, I got to think about that, Peanut, because it's like, I'm trying to think of just from a football perspective of like guys that I played with, like, or played against, or like mm-hmm. guys that I, like Darren Sproles. Yeah. He's a guy that could not be more different than me, but as a, as a pro, like. I just lo- like loved his attitude and the way he played football and the way he goes about his business. And like, he was a guy that I, you know, I like, I had 
somewhat limited interactions with him, but he's like unbelievable guy. Yeah, I love Sprozy. Yeah, he's just a great guy, and like he pra- like he practiced the way he just he's so just hard. like an ultimate. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. he's catching punts and then finishing them through the uh, end zone on like every single rep. It's like, yes. Dude. And, I, and you just know that he's been doing that his entire career. Yes. You know, and it's just a, it's not even a thought for him. Like, he just, I don't know. I got I to gotta think about that a little more. And then, you know, you, I don't know. Well, right, who's, well, who's, well, your, who's on your right, Mount well, Rushmore? Think about it. Take yeah, your I gotta, time. I got to think Take about that time. one. Um, I want to know about the Facts and the King. Yeah. And the work with the Water Boys. So Water Boys is a charitable organization um, that Chris Long does. I play with Chris in Philly, and he would always talk about, you know, his Water Boys organization. And basically, it provides clean water for uh, those in need, whether that's in sub-Saharan Africa or even in, uh, I was at a, his charity golf event last week. So, like, they do stuff locally, too. So he they just did a well for a family in need in Virginia. Um, but Water Boys is a great organization. We kind of talked before yeah. I got on about uh, climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. That was uh, a lot of fun. It was tough. Did Rob uh, Nikovic go on that? Yeah, Rob was on the same yeah. one. Yeah, so yeah, we had a really that. cool group. Because he loves Chris. He, he yeah, Chris good yeah, yeah. Nico, he was hilarious. Um, climbing the mountain, like, Everyone is very, all buddy buddy and uh, uh, you know enjoying the mountain and stuff until the last day, and then it, it really hits the fan, and it's <laughs> yeah. like, kind of like a free for all. <laughs> like it was the last day of, with Summit Day is a when, total you, when you're going up and yeah. then back down, right? Yep. Yeah, so uh, it's so funny. Uh, like I was climbing with Ninko, hiking with Ninko the whole time, like chit chatting, and then the final time. <laughs> Uh, he beat me up the summit. So like he's walking down from the summit and I'm walking up and I'm like, I like kept trying to catch his eye. Like, like, how was it up there? And he didn't say a word to me. He, he just, he just he buzzed right, right by me. I was like, Oh, like it, it's really a free for all. Uh, but climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, like it was a, it's a really cool thing. And we had a great group. It was like Ninko, Cortland Finnegan, Chris, uh, Kelsey. And, uh, and then it's a cool thing. Cause they, um, they pair up, you know, athletes with, um, uh, you know, military vets, and it's it's a cool experience, like just talking with those guys, and it's a great thing. So, Water Boys is a really good organization. I want your comment. Uh, what's your opinion on the Tush Push, dude? I'm in, like, I talked to Kelsey because it didn't it. get suspended. I thought they were going to take poor, it out the game. Bro. Like, it's a, don't get me wrong, it, it's a great play, and it's very successful for a reason. But like, I'm a nose guard, man. Like, how are you supposed to? What do you want me to do here? Like, how do you stop this? It's you. I don't know. Like, I talked with Kelsey about this a lot because. We were trying to figure out, like, I was asking him, like, how do you stop it? Like, what do you, you know, like, how do you defend that? And it's t- it's hard, too, because they have all those counters they run off of it, too, yeah. you know? And they, they have, and like, And you got guys right up. there pushing, too. Well, look, I know you got some things to do, man. We appreciate you coming on the podcast. Oh, yeah, thanks, thanks just, a lot for having me. Giving us a couple stories about Minnetonk and everything. I just like saying Minnetonk. That's you like do. my fifth time saying it. Uh, completely. Hey, Dave Chappelle put me exactly. down. Exactly. Yeah. Dave Chappelle put me down on Lake Minnetonka. So I'm just the Prince thing. Like you I, just, I can't not stop saying <laughs> yeah. Minnetonka. You'd never expect Prince to be from Minnesota. No, no. way you do. Yeah. No. No what way. They said he had a huge place right there on Lake Yeah. yeah. He's from so he he had a studio in like Chanhassen, which is like right where I grew up. Um he's a legend, man. Like you go, you drive around Minneapolis, you see like Prince murals, and you're just kinda like like I yeah. <laughs> like, love it. So, but yeah, thanks a lot for having me, gents. It's 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 great. Appreciate yeah. you, boss. Thanks for coming on. All right, man. Well, uh, thank you to all of our listeners and viewers wherever you are at, wherever you've taken in your podcast, whether it's Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio. Make sure you give us a five star rating, give us a re- a review, leave a couple comments. Make sure you click that follow button to continue to help us spread the word to tell a friend to tell a friend to do what, Peanut? Tell a friend! There it is, man. But we're going to get up out of here, man. Bo Allen, thank you so much, man, for thank blessing you us with your time, man. You're great. You're awesome. Appreciate and dude, it. Dude, man, you got to get out of Tampa more. You're going <laughs> to be try. up here struggling with yeah. the cold, bro. You got to yeah. do better, all right? Yeah. You are way too big to be cold. We'll, we'll get there. So, yeah, we'll <laughs> get more back, teeth man. chattering. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, yeah, man, Peanut, man, get us out of here, man. And I'm pretty hey, much. I'm, I'm Peanut. That's Bo. That's Gandalf. Hey, and this is the NFL Player Second X Podcast. We out.